Hello everybody and welcome once again to another episode of Pneumaticraft Repressurized from Minecraft 116. So today we are going to actually go to the nether. I would wanted to, I've set up a quarry and I want to show you the program because it was actually much more difficult than I thought it would be. Um, but first we're going to have a look at the aerial interface and we're going to see how we can transfer air from one place to another. So let's get started with that. So what we need for doing this, we need two aerial interfaces, two charging modules, um, some reinforced air canisters, those act as an air pressure buffer, uh, advanced PCBs so that the charging modules run faster, some pipes and an ender chest. Um, we need one ender chest. I'm pretty sure we it should work with two, but I think it doesn't work with two when they're in the same dimension. Anyway, let's get started. So first of all, we need to put down a... This one that she's already been used because you can see it's got some air in it. Let's put this down here and then have a look at the configuration of this one. It's a side configuration. So at the moment it's set for all of the defaults, which is the front and back have got inventories on it. So what we can do is this actually has already got air in it. As you can see, it's got 19 bar in here. So what I would like to do onto this, I would like to put on some pipes, but I have to be careful because when I put a pipe down, it's going to... Um, release pressure so what I'm going to do is remove this first of all so we can put some pipes down so let's just put down some pipes I'm going to make a ring of pipes and then break one ah uh, but it'll of course it'll link into this one ha 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 let's just have a think how I'm going to do this so I need a block of some description maybe a tank will do as a block like that and then we just put some pipes around it so we would like to have um, I'd like to put in a charging module so what we'll do is we'll put it in like this I need high pressure pipes of course because we're talking at high pressure so we need one pipe here one pipe here one pipe here like that and then we need to put onto this one of these two corners here um, a charging module so let's just put the charging module onto this side here if I can get to the right place we should be able to put it on like that Okay, and then we can replace this now and we can put into that the aerial interface. Not sure which one it was, doesn't make shouldn't make any difference. So let's put this down here like that. And then have a look at this. So the side interfaces now. On the left hand side we've changed this one. It actually says ah oh, yes. <laughs> You can't tell at the moment because it's Christmas time and these are main inventories and the ender chest looks exactly the same as the as the um, as the other, as normal inventories. Anyway, this needs to be an ender inventory setting, and that needs to be the side of the uh, charging module like this. Now, in order for this to charge up faster, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put on some advanced PCBs, and that will increase the speed that things get charged up at. So. Now, in here we have an ender chest. Let's put the ender chest down. doesn't really matter where you put it. Uh, an ender chest like this. And in the ender chest we shall put in the two um, reinforced air canisters. And if we look at these, these should start to charge up. You'll see at the speed that's charging up now. If I remove from here the PCB, if I can do that, it might be difficult. Uh, it'll probably break. I'll tell you what we'll do. Just press that one there, turn it off and then remove this, oh, to do it that way, okay, <laughs> never mind, uh, I'll have to put everything back again now, I'll be back in a second when I've done that, right, I dropped quite a lot of pressure out of there when I did that, but if you look at this now, you'll see the speed this is charging up is much slower, see it's 3.3, in fact I probably should have done it the other way around, shouldn't I, and it's taking a long time to get up to 3.4 bar, um, as soon as we put on the advanced PCB it will charge up a lot faster we'll just have a comparison of that and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about if you haven't already figured it out like that and come along here and then have a look at this so now you see it's going up a lot faster so that's what the advanced PCB does for you so this is actually charging up this ender chest and it should work fine I think I have another ender chest in the nether so if I think if the two ender chests are in the same dimension this stalled it did stall for me last time anyway so that's charging up and this is also of course this particular um um 
advanced air compressor is is always being fueled as you can see it's now down 52 this will then this drone will go and fill it up with um some more wood and some some more charcoal basically from the farm back there so we've got a sort of infinite supply of um fuel so that's why i'm using this particular one and here i've put on here a, um, a vortex tube and on this vortex tube here i've put a, a 0.2 bar threshold on here so it doesn't use too much yet um pressure but it does cool it down reasonably well so if we have a look at this now you'll see that it's actually a bit hot at the moment um, maybe i need to increase this but it should keep it cool most of the time it's fine but since i actually messed it up a bit when i was doing that it, it's wasted a lot of fuel so now i'm going to go to the nether and i shall see you there so here we are as you can see i have got up a, a programmable controller here I'm fed, I've got a hopper in here so I can feed it some items. The items I've been feeding are the Supremium Pickaxe and the Supremium Paxel. Here we've got a, a advanced air compressor. Um, and this one's being fed with fuel in this chest, in this hopper here. So I just put some charcoal in it. That's quite a long time. But there's one slight problem here. You'll see that the temperature of this is always 54 degrees because that's the temperature is another. So if you right click this, you'll see that it's always, whatever we're doing, it's doing nothing at the moment, it's 54 degrees. So what we can do is replace that side of that, this bit, we can replace it with another system. So let's just do that. I'm not sure how much pressure I'm going to lose when I do this. Maybe a bit, maybe nothing. Let's just remove this like that we can then remove this block here like this because we don't need these anymore have they gone into the hopper here let's break the hopper we don't need the hopper so this one i have to break with a pickaxe like that so did i pick up everything that i wanted i think i have we shall find out so here we can put in an aerial interface and the output from this aerial interface is going to be um into the into the systems so all i need to do is put it here like this so let's put it down here and i think this will work i haven't tested this actually here i haven't tested it so let's just put it on this pipe here so then this should have it doesn't have any pressure in yet so it needs some pressure so it needs some pipes so we can put some pipes into it <laughs> so let's do that so let's put down some advanced pressure pipes I'm just wondering if they're going to connect anywhere I don't want them to I think it'll connect onto this so let's just block this one off here and here so that they won't connect into here when I put the pipes in so let's put the pipes down here like this so we need to put one pipe here but it will link in so let's put it down like this oh I need to break it first anyway let's just put it on on here so you get the work done oops wrong one <laughs> Where did it go to? I just saw that disappear. Oh, I know where it'll be in this chest. This chest has got um, a magnet upgrades in it. So that's where the stuff was going to. I thought there wasn't quite got enough what I was expecting. I was expecting some heat sinks in my inventory. Let's try that again. So this time I want to put down some pipes. I want to put one on this one here like this good so that's not connected in so that'll connect across here to the aerial interface so we can go up one here and then we can go across one here like that i was just hoping it wasn't connecting into anything and then we shall put onto this the the charging mod module as we've got here like this some strange noises so here we go i should be able to put this on here now i'm pressing shift Huh, I have to go down one block, no problem. Like that, and then I can put this on here. Like that. So when I put the aerial interface back onto here, it will connect to this pipe here, which will then provide pressure. In fact, it likes to also connect to this pipe here. So we could actually block one of these two off. We don't need them both connecting, but I don't think it makes any difference because they're connected together. So let's put this in here now, like that. And then this thing should start to get pressure, as you can see. Actually, the pressure went up fairly quickly. So let's put onto this now the um, advanced PCB. I think we need an advanced PCB on here like that. In here, there's a another ender chest. 
So it's possible that these have stalled. No, 19.1. So that should be okay. So this should have 19.1, but it actually hasn't got it in. I'm not quite sure why, but let's just check the side configuration because the top side, that's the front. Oh, I've got inventory in the wrong one. So that wants to be a, norm, a normal inventory. Let's just unconnect, disconnect it, and let's make the top here uh, end the inventory like this. And that should then now get, yes, now you can see the pressure is going up. So it's got pressure. Before, it must have been just had pressure from before. So now this is getting powered from the base at the bottom. So the other things in here, as you'll see, so now we've got our pressure. Let's have a look at this. I've set up a, a draw controller and a slave draw controller here, uh, and with some chests or oh, some storage drawers in here. And each one of these storage drawers, if you look at it, I've got one storage upgrade and one void upgrade in here, with the exception of Netherrack. <laughs> well, Netherrack, I filled it up with um, storage upgrades plus one void upgrade. As you can see, the amount of stuff in here is large. And the idea was to quarry this area over here. As you can see, I've quarried most of this area. There are quite a few um, gas that spawn because I started with a bigger area. Probably a mistake. So let's go and have a look at this. Turn on the jetpack and have a look down here. So what? <laughs> so what I've done is I've done most of this area with. Um, but lava disrupts the, the mine are quarrying because um, I'm starting from the top and going down. So what I did here is I put in some gravel, I just used gravel to let it sink down and then block off the lava so the lava wasn't flowing into it. But what, the one thing you've got to watch out for is soul sand. If lava hits soul, uh, gravel hits soul sand, it just breaks and disappears into nowhere. Uh, you can usually tell because of the number of counts, like I think. Here I had some soul sand that was causing a little bit of a problem. So the other thing, the whole purpose of this was to actually mine up some um, ancient debris in order to get some... Um, now where is it? I wanted to show you one because I've got one on the sides here. Probably low down. In fact, let's just turn on the mini map again. And I've got in-game wing points off. Let's just put them on there and we can probably see better. So somewhere about here I've got one that's saying ancient debris. Oh no I haven't. <laughs> Not because I have a different world. <laughs> and I saved it in the other world. Never mind, I should be able to find it. It's not too difficult. I think it's further down. And what I'm looking for is some uh, blackstone. You can see these chunks of blackstone but there's another chunk of blackstone somewhere. And it's there. No, I can't see it. I'll tell you what, I'm finding it. I'll come back in a second. So here it is. And that's what it looks like from the side. It looks different from the top. Let's just open up this block here if, above it. And maybe the one below it. And then you can have a look what it looks like. It looks it's got this pattern when you're seeing it from below, which is easy. And the same pattern is actually from the top. Oops, I'm sliding around a bit. She's going to build a mode really. Let's just do that. So it looks like this from above. And it's fairly easy to see. You can take away this from the bottom. So once you've seen that, it's quite easy to see from the top. It's quite hard to see from the side though. So the quarry is a good place to do that. And all of these strange blocks here, it's run through the quarry once, have been caused by lava. And I'm not quite sure why the lava would do this. Because the rest of it's been mined out, so the lava's fl been flowing, like flooding the whole area. Because you can see there's a huge amount of lava back here. So let's go and get the um, the quarry running again, and it'll it'll mine up all of this stuff. It takes quite a long time. Um, that, I need to get rid of the builder mode when I do this because it's too slow. So what I'm going to do next is actually just get the quarry to run. Let's turn this off again. And I'm going to turn off the waypoints as well for that matter. Let's just do that. In-game waypoints. Let's just turn off the minimap and that's it. We don't need the minimap. So now this should be powered up properly. It is good. 
and in here we shall just put back the drone the, the, pro, the drone for this program like the wrong place where did that go to oh here so now this is running as you can see it's got enough pressure we've got no problems and what it's doing at the moment is it's mining down i'll have a quick i quick we'll have a quick look outside and have a look at that as well because it's well worth seeing it so it should be working at this level now in fact it's got to start at the top and work its way down again because i took it out so what it's going to be doing next is it's get it's going to scan this area and it's going to knock out this row now things like netherrack as you saw in the thing um and nether quartz will be picked up and will be put straight into the um chest so that's going to take a few seconds for that to to run down we'll let it run we'll let it run through and have a look at the program at the same time oh hello <laughs> Got a zombie pigment. They're not called zombie pigment, are they? They're zombified pig, pig lines, I think they're called. Piglins. So now let's have a look at this program. There's actually two programs running here. This is the first one. This is the one that does the mining. It looks complicated, but it's not really. Um, so we start off here and we, we check to see if any coordinate, if this coordinate's been set. So we're looking for the first position. So I'm going to set up the first position and the second position because they'll be displayed on this here, like that. So let's just set it up. Um, uh, in here I've got the GPS tool and I'm going to set these positions up in the GPS tool and I'll come back in a second. So I've set up the positions as you can see. There must be a... This this particular sentry turret is basically doing most things that, except for zombie pigmen um, I'm not sure what that noise is I do recognize it actually but he's not doing everything but zombie pigmen um, oh yes there we are a pig line so anyway let's have a look at this <laughs> it's distracting with these noises I've set it up to this position so this is position number one is here and position number two would be down the bottom here like that and what it's doing is it's doing it in slices so it does one row at a time going down the down this column until it reaches basically zero so let's have a look at this it should be still running and as you can see at the moment it's at on position 98 so the first and second positions here so it's doing 98 now it's gone down to 97 as you can see and this count goes up one so let's look at this in the program again so that's just printing this out here like this so what it does is it, it checks these, then it sets the positions here, like this. I'm setting the positions. I'm setting first to being a position where the um, program com programmable controller is, and then I'm adding to that or subtracting 32 in the x and adding 2 in the z. So it's pushing it further out. Of course, it depends which direction you're going on as to what these coordinates would be, and then I am taking off. From here, I'm adding 64 in the X and 32 in the Z for the second position. You see, this is the second position. And then we've got those two positions. I've got a value depth, which I have actually removed. It was here. I don't need the depth because I want it to go down to zero. Because we go down to zero and then we decrement the counts. As you can see, we're at decrementing the counts. I set up the position of the sign and I set up the position of a lever. Um, the lever is here like this what it should do is it should toggle the lever when it's reached the bottom of the program like this so then the first thing it does next so when those have been initialized it comes back up here and then it goes to mine like this so what it will do first time around it just initializes the pieces because it's got this is true in other words these are all zero and the second time it goes around it starts to mine and this is the relative coordinate mining and mine martin's done a video on this so he explains it perfectly in there so let's have a look here so first thing i'm doing is i'm setting up an area here a box filled from the first position to the second position so that's just the first row and it's looking for lava and it's looking all signs for the lava and it finds it it'll it'll import the lava into its inventory 
Um, and this particular version is a bug that doesn't actually import the larva, it just voids it, which is actually what I probably want anyway. <laughs> and then the second one here is we've got another one which is going to mine the area and it's going to do the closest one to the area. I'm not sure whether that makes much difference or not. And then it comes down and compares whether we've reached um, the last position of the of first. So when first is Y has gone down to zero, then it's this condition is true. So then we toggle the light. If it's not true, we decrement the rows. So we decrement the um, the Y coordinate on both those two positions and increment the counter or the X value of the counter by one. And then it goes back up to mine again. So it's doing this loop until it's finished. And when it's finished, it comes over here, right clicks the lever and we should turn on the light and then goes moves over to the drone position. This is probably incorrect. I probably should move this away and bring in this position here like this. Um, rather than use drone, we'll use first. But first does change, so it'll change. It's not ideal. Anyway, it doesn't matter very much. There's no point in collecting in here. I've got um, I've got magnets in the um, program wall control. Let's have a look at that again. Like this. I've got maximum number inventory upgrades, maximum speed upgrade, one security upgrade because they're quite expensive, obviously, and six magnet upgrades. And that's also a maximum number of those. The only ones which you could put in on top of this would be volume upgrades, but we haven't got no space to do that. And we don't really need to do it because there's plenty of pressure in here. It doesn't actually use up that much air as it happens. I thought it would use up more. Oh, yes. I think zombified piglins, piglins and piglins don't get on together. So anyway, so the magnets will pick up all the items which get dropped. So let's go and have a look at how this is progressing again. It's down to like level 19. Let me just turn this off. Well, let's get the sword in my hand because it's usually useful. And then just drop down here. And before we get to the bottom, we'll just turn on this. So we are at level... Oh, I need the magnet on, don't I? Um, let's just put that on the mini-map on because I'm not 100% sure. We're at level 55, so it's still working its way down here. It's it's not got much to do, so it doesn't take that long, even though it's a fairly large um, area to do. In fact, I will shall come back in a second when it does start to mine. So I'll see you in a second. What I should have said at the beginning is that I didn't. I should have said I'm um, actually the whole purpose of this was to get some ancient debris. I've got four ancient debris, so let's go and smelt these up. I can smell them up with sticks. In fact, you'll see that one stick was enough with the Supreme Infernus to do. They get the four. Where have they gone to? In here? Nope. In here. Can't see them. They're drying. Here we go. So we need four pieces of gold. There's actually quite a lot of gold in the leather these days. We're getting it from here. If you smelt these up, put those in there, you'll actually get four ingots. If you break them, uh, I need a stick in there, don't I? Let's put a stick in. As you can see, we've got four ingots like that. And then we can just basically craft this up. So it doesn't actually matter where we put the stuff. Let's just spread it out a bit. You can do it any way you want to, like that. And you get another right ingot. So it's... And this drone has just been... It's just picked up... Yes. So now it's working. And you'll see what it's doing is actually picking up another nether bricks because in here let's start again outside here i haven't shown you this i have a smart chest and the smart chest has got things locked into it actually i did think it had nether bricks in it it does have nether bricks in here okay so anything in here should have been you can see they're coming in occasionally like this they're getting pulled out by this hopper and pushed into um the draw controller and the draw controller pushes them in here like this. So I was, I was wondering why. Well, I'm not quite sure why that's not doing. So I should have some nether bricks on me. Not. No, I don't have any nether bricks. But I've got gold. So let's right click this and put the gold into that like that. So we have our nether right. And the uses of that, from our side, we would like to make another bit, another right bit, drill bit. 
So then that will be the one. So we, but we have to go back to base to do that, which we'll have a look at in a second. So as you can see, this is working nicely. Everything's mining up quite efficiently. We're not having any problems with it. Um, let's just put into here the charcoal and coal. This. I was using dirt essence to make um, uh, with stone essence to make gravel, and that's what I was using. That in fact, I think you get a lot of from one stack of that, you get about six stacks of gravel. So there we are. So this is now running. Let's have a look. So, so now it's down to 47. We'll have a go and have a quick look at this, and then we go back to base. Ah, yes. So here's another problem. I haven't got any blocks to fill this in with. Uh, I'm not going to use compressed iron. I just have to go and let's just harvest one up. So what happens is it, it can mine down here. Now, the, as you can see, the, the drones just mined underneath this here, like this. So it should be able to mine underneath all of the blocks. Wait another few seconds. It'll come back and it'll do the next row. Um, so that's doing the other next row here. You'll see it just goes underneath that, no problem. So it should be able to mine everything up. But later on, as you'll notice, it doesn't quite work. Let's put this into here like this. That will disappear down. So that's one thing you do have to watch. So you can't just go away and leave it running. Um, because if you do, it just doesn't work 100%. Let's have a few, few more seconds. There's a ghast over there. Let's just go and get him. Two. I've got my magnet on. So we got one. Oh, actually, we didn't get too much this time. Unless I dropped it. It can happen that you drop the stuff. It doesn't look like I did. Normally, I get anywhere up to three um, uh, gas tears when I kill a gas with this sword. So this will carry on working it will actually mine all the way down here i actually made a mistake as you can see i have to put i had to put down another row or column of gravel so that when it mines down there it's not going to all leak in and then prevent this area from being properly mined so right let's go back to base now and make the last part of this i think that's everything oh no there's one more thing i need to show you I've got another program in here. There's another drone running around here, as you saw. It's sitting on this anvil for most of the time. He's moving stuff from one place to the other. So let's just make sure I've got the moving program and the mining program. So let's put this into the mining program. So the mining program needs 70 pieces. In fact, it doesn't, because now I can get rid of these bits in here. I don't need these, because um, the magnet, as I said, picks up stuff. and what I wanted to notice here is that I was using the first time I did this I was using drone and the position of drone got moved and the second time round so the second time it round it moved and he actually dug up everything that he shouldn't have dug up um, including itself and he broke all these blocks and actually everything disappeared so I what I did is I just got them cheated them back in again because I wasn't too happy <laughs> Anyway, nothing, enough of that. Here's, the, here's a look at the... Did I put the mining program in here? Yes, I did. Let's have a look at the moving program. So in here, I have got a whole load of stuff. Oh, I know I haven't got... I haven't got any netherrack in here. That's uh, netherrack bricks. I should have those in there. So I've got the two tools. You don't need to put all of this stuff in, but it's well worth putting in netherrack. Otherwise, the drone is flying around all the time. So what it does is it goes to a position... Let's have... Let's highlight this position it's going to. Here. So it's going to on top of the anvil. Like that. So that's the anvil. I haven't bothered to use variables in this case. And then it's going to go to a chest. Let's have a look at this one. Click it on and off then, and you should be able to see it. It's this chest here, which in fact is the programmable controller. So, And the reason I've done that is because this drone was getting caught on the heat sinks of the um that was cooling down the air compressor or the advanced air compressor so it's going from here 
and it goes to the anvil because it's, it's got a direct route you can see that no problem and then from there it's coming back again so I was using that go to piece to, to bypass it this is the same place this is the anvil and then it comes here so this one here is let's look at this one will be the uh, slave controller of this area like that and then this one here is going to be the final chest which is this one so it then so it first of all puts anything it can into the slave controller so anything that's picked up one of these blocks will go in here otherwise it'll put the stuff into here so as you can see it's found a few other bits and pieces like some polished black actually got mushrooms mostly and some nether wood because we've got we're at the top of um, a fortress so that's how that was working and I think that's basically it. I'm going to move these out of the way because they're in the wrong place now, of course. But of course, when you sort this, it sorts um, the stuff out of here. So that's actually a bug in the inventory sorter, I believe. Like that. So that's what that program does. So let's just um, turn that off again because we don't want to preview the area all the time. But it stays if you do that. It stays for quite a long, forever almost, until you restart the game. So that's what that's doing. So anything that's not stored in here will get picked up like that one. It's a piece of, oh yeah, you just saw it do it. That was a piece of cobblestone, 56. Because cobblestone is not, obviously is not very much cobblestone, only when I'm making it because I'm standing on lava. Ah, right, let's go back to base. You'll see that's all working. I think if you have any problem with it, just ask. We can explain it. Uh, again, it's a bit of a shame about the, the Christmas boxes because they're, they're looking exactly the same so i'll see you in a second when we're back home uh, before i go let's have a look at the map here yeah, because i have you fairly easily see certain things uh, for example we are here aren't we yes we've been mining this area up here and we should be able to see the fortress so here's the fortress that's been mining up here and you can see quite a lot with this one you can also see that i've been quite a long way down here and here it will be a um, bastion remnants in here and you can find in here chests with ancient debris or the um what do they call them once when you melted it the shards i think and there's about three of those around and one of them was actually really big and inside that I, the one i found was really big this one here this is a bastion remnant and this is the the side bit in here there was a magna cream spawner which i extracted with a bit of fun so i'll see you in a second when i'm back in base so here we are so let's put this netherite ingot in here and see what we can do that's the input one so let's put it in here i think that's the right one yep so it gets taken up and gets processed into a, it's getting drilled isn't it i think that's the recipe So here we have another right drill bit. So let's put this in. Oh, this is the best bit. <laughs> oh, I like some of these challenges. They're great. Uh, so here we've got this now. So this time when we shift right click this, we can no, right click it. How do I do that? Shift right click it, I think. And then we can select these. So we can select all of these. So this one here should allow me to be able to vein mine the same thing up. Let's have a look. Over here, I think we've got some coal. Or did I already mine that up? I wonder if I can mine, if I mined up. No, I don't think that would be very sensible because stone and stone is stone, isn't it? Oh, here we are, some coal. So, sure enough, that works just a treat. And I'm not sure where the gravel was one as well. So I think if I do this and the side, did it do stone as well as anthracite? Oh no, it worked on anthracite and just picked up the whole area of anthracite. That's cool, isn't it? In fact, I'm just picking up stuff because I've got my magnet on. So that's that one. And the other mode, of course, is a 3x3. Three three, so that's pretty good. At the moment, I've turned off auto charging. That's why these have not got on. Let's just put that back again because when you're messing around with them um, canisters you want to make sure that you've got it turned off 
So the last thing for this episode is, when I did all of those two big quarries, I did manage to find out about 20... So I think... Yeah, 20, 20 ancient uh, debris, which allows me to be able to create a seed. So I've got four of these on here like this, and we should then be able to create a seed. Now the seed actually isn't... It's actually quite a reasonable seed. It's quite, it's actually slightly cheap. Um, so we've got another right seed. If you look at the uses of that one, it'll it'll produce netherite essence. And the uses of that, it'll, eight of the uh, will, eight of those will produce one netherite ingot. And it's supposed to be equivalent in terms of rarity to emerald. Now emeralds actually have nine, so you'd get one of those with nine. So that's quite interesting. Let's go and plant this. Um, I've also set up beside this a. It's raining and I don't like it when it rains. <laughs> in real life, I don't mind, but in the game, it's actually a bit of a nuisance. So, beside this, I put. Let's um, so see if I can get it into place. Like that. Another star seed. And the nether star seed has basically got one block underneath. This is a nether crux. And that should work reasonably well. I don't think I've actually got anything on that at the moment, so look. No, everything's going out, that's good. Um, so there should be another star crux under, directly underneath this, and this has actually got Insanium. Does it tell me somewhere? I think it does, if I get to the right, the right bit. No. It should tell me that I've got some, and it's actually Insanium um, farmland. Right, that was hard. So those will grow, and you see, it's actually fairly slow. I've actually got two of these now, and the use of the is I think you need eight to produce a shard, and you need three shards to produce another star. And but it costs you quite a few nether stars in order to get them. In fact, it costs you six nether stars. So let's have a look at that before I go. Um. Let's look at mystical agriculture, because mystical agriculture also got into it compressed iron. So this is this one here, the another star. So nine of those make one shard, and three of those need make one star. So you need twenty-seven essence to make one. Um, that one another star, and here we should also find. Let's have a look. Compressed iron. This is new, I think, and for we've got a compressed iron seed, which is tier four like that and that will then produce compressed iron of course and the uses of that one will produce six eight will produce six so that's actually very similar to iron which is actually good because it's basically the same as iron isn't it well that's it for this episode i hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new um there are a few more things i would like to make a comment about let's just fix the performance problems with the um tubes the, the pressure tubes have been causing quite a lot of lag and that's all gone fantastic also i was given a few tips from somebody called kiki ra and he told me about the um spawner extractor and the va vacuum things they were good tips anyway next time i shall cover those a little bit i think uh until then i wish you all the best bye for now